Hi guys, welcome back to Lost in My Library. My name is Kate. Today, I am doing a ARC review on the book Holdout by Jeffrey Kluger. If you see me looking down, I'm looking at my notes and making sure I don't miss anything when it comes to this review. So, a couple of things. Um, why I chose to read this book. Well, one, I went on a spree of just <sighs> looking for arcs. Um, and first of all, I this is where I think this led me to um, being reached out by the publisher. And I thank you so much to Dutton and Plume with Penguin, uh, which is a subsidiary of Penguin Random House, thank you so much. I really do appreciate um, you reaching out and asking me if I would like to review this book. I sincerely appreciate that, and I will always consider it if you ask me. So, I... So, this book, what it was pitched to me as. I'm going to tell you what it was pitched to me as, and tell you whether or not... I agree with what, how it was pitched to me. So the first line after that um, was telling me is a quote from Riley Sager. This is why I think the publisher reached out to me was because I requested to read Riley Sager's new book, uh, Survive the Night, on NetGalley. I didn't receive it, but they reached out uh this publishing company might have seen that I, um, it, I requested Riley Sagers, didn't end up getting Riley Sagers, but they came to me with this. So Riley Sager says, this is so cinematic, it should come with a tub of popcorn. I do agree, it should become, come with a tub of popcorn, because as a main criticism of this book, it feels like it is sort it's it's re, it's begging it's begging to be made into it maybe uh jeffrey kluger is the author of apollo 13 which is was made into a movie which i believe starred tom hanks um and may have actually won some academy awards um that's why i say this book is a major push it's begging someone to buy the built film rights for this book. Because it's not a thriller. I, when, when you, when you pitched to me that Riley Sager, who is known for writing thrillers and writing about taking the horror genre, different storylines of the horror genre and making it his own, and Pitt say that he said this was a top thriller. I question Riley Sager's thought process of listing this as a thriller? It's not a thriller. <laughs> not in the sense of, like, this is scary. Like, I, it's not a thriller, for one thing. It's a environmentalist case. Um, it is a call for environmentalism and the effects of the what's going just kind of what's going on in the on the earth trying to push for um, better b taking better care of the environment. Calling that a thriller I don't don't agree with that but um, as the the email goes on it's written by a best-selling author of Apollo 13, an award-winning science author, Jeffrey Kluger, um, Holdout, which is at August 3rd, stars a brave renegade and an the astronaut willing to risk it all to make a stand for justice by hijacking the International Space Station. That is such a cool concept that if you could think this of, like, the Cold War... And it's really interesting when you think in terms of the Cold War because there's not 
fighting in this book. There may be arguments, there might be a little bit of threats, but there is no actual fighting in this book. Um, so thinking in terms of the Cold War, but this post-Cold War, because the Americans and the Russians are working together in a sort of peaceful way, uh, they disagree on a lot of things, but they are fairly peaceful about their their interactions. Um, and the International Space Station is there, so yeah, it's <laughs> it's post Cold War. Uh, it says Mark Watney, you've met your match. I'm not sure who that is. Uh, perfect for fans of Andy Weir's Project Hail Mary. I agree with that. If you're a fan of Andy Weir, I think you would actually really enjoy this book. I don't know if you would necessarily enjoy this book if you're a Riley Sager fan. I, I don't see the two mixing very well. Um, who are looking for their next space fix. Of those who care about the little blue and green dot we all live on. Hold out is not to miss. Uh, so again, it's not mentioned that this is heavy on the environmentalism. And it's sold to you as a thriller. Now on Goodreads, it is not listed as a thriller. So I'm not sure why the marketing is pushing it to be a thriller. Because it's not really a thriller. So, let's talk about the book itself. I am now using Call Pal to kind of put my thoughts together and figure out how I'm going to rate this book. I ended up actually landing this as a 4, mainly because I was intrigued to see where this was going. Um, the writing is really good. This author obviously knows what he's doing and is a good writer so there's nothing wrong with his writing um the logic it seems like a very logical book although i'm not sure how the the situation of a of a astronaut not coming back from the space station when asked to come back from the space station is plausible i'm not 100 percent sure how accurate that could actually be. She stays up there for a good long while. Nearly a month she stays up in the space station. I really don't know how plausible that is. Um, if people would try to force her out. Um, I really, I really don't know. Uh, he's, he's in the epilogue and actually the author's note at the end. He says he did a lot of research on this, so maybe he knows more than I do. I kept the logic fairly high uh, at an 8 on my call pile, so it didn't hinder it so much. It was more just questioning, um, could this actually happen? So the main story, and the main thing that's going to hinder this book is the characters and the atmosphere. This book's characters, you're either good or you're evil. There is no in-between. There is absolutely no in-between. You are not mentioned if you are in the in-between. The only character that I would say is kind of morally gray is the lawyer at the very beginning who tried to explain to Wally, who is our main character, I don't know if I even mentioned her name, her name's Wally, uh, who talked to Wally about the legal per repercussions of what was going to happen to her. And then she disappeared. <laughs> She's gone pretty soon after the first few chapters after telling Wally that what was going to happen. Um, our main characters are Wally and Sonya. Uh, Wally is the aunt to Sonya. Sonia is a doctor in the Brazilian rainforest. She's helping indigenous tribes there with medical things. And there is a new president in Brazil in the book where who wants to basically destroy a big chunk of the Amazon rainforest. And he is misplacing, displacing a lot of indigenous tribes along the way. 
and he's putting them in basically concentration camps. We're not holding back their concentration camps. And what Wally is wanting to do, and why she takes over the spaceship and decides to stay up there, is because the U.S. Congress is going to vote in about a month after she decides this that she that they're if whether or not they're going to actually um come in and help with the amazon rainforest save the amazon rainforest and since this is largely made public uh she grows a large backing behind her and I think that's possibly part of the reason why they didn't want to force her out. And I could see that, uh, why they didn't want to force Wally out from the International Space Station. Because she grew a very, very large backing. Because most people, if you ask them, being like, would you want to save the Amazon rainforest? Most people would say, yes, I would love to save the Amazon rainforest. That is very important. We need to protect our Amazon rainforest. So she grew a very large backing behind her. And also a lot of people are just, you know, government's bad. We're just anti-government. So really anything that's anti-government, is go they're going to back that as well. So she across the world grew a very very large backing and this story is just her time on the international space station and sonia showing what sonia is doing on ground as a doctor in the brazilian rainforest now i would like to add that sonia is half uh, latino uh and half Cauca caucasian uh her mom is Latina, and her dad is Caucasian. So, but she's described as very dark skin. She took more after her mother. So, in a lot of things, she is able to connect with the people of the Brazilian rain, of the indigenous tribes of the Brazilian rainforest more because she looks more like them. And it actually helps her in a few different situations, like in the latter half of the book. Uh, and I found that really interesting. So we have some POC representation with Sonya. And uh, that's pretty much it with the characters. Now, the Brazilian president and the American president are the main bad guys of this book. Although the American president doesn't necessarily do anything bad he doesn't help <laughs> he's the secondary kind of villain and he's a terrible person but the brazilian president is the main bad guy of this story so we really have two bad people and then the rest are good people for the most part we have these soldiers people that are like evil but they don't really have any major part of the book other than um just being, you know, moving indigenous people, guarding indigenous people, co guarding the uh, concentration camps, that kind of thing. So, yeah, we have some bad people there as well. But everybody else, we had one senator who uh, Wally actually speaks to and personally asks him to change his vote. And at first, he's like, no, I'm on the president's, um, in the president's party, and, uh, that's just gonna hinder my, my election coming up, because mid-years are coming up in the book. And, uh, that quickly changes, uh, very soon later, he, he was kind of on the fence in the first place, but very soon after, he definitely does change over and help so there, really there's no morally gray and everybody it's just all one dimensional there's nothing to most of these characters she's a love interest and really he's just there to be the pep talker <laughs> give her pep talks for most of the book he's not really interesting 
Really, only Wally and Sonya are interesting. The Brazilian president, I would have liked to see more of the Brazilian president and what he was doing and his thought processes. I think that would have been very interesting um, to not just get this overwhelming, like, what the good people are doing. Because the good people are really not doing a whole lot. <laughs> Um, up until, they're kind of just, you know, pushing and just speaking, publicly speaking. Uh, we really don't get to see much of that either, but, because uh, Wally just <laughs> is just up there. Her main thing is just sitting up there and, you know, pushing for this. Her being up in the space station is really the only thing that she does to push for the the environmental um, message of this book. So, another thing that, that is very hurt in this book is the atmosphere. Because, it, again, it feels like this is just begging for someone to buy the movie rights for this. Because there's n no atmosphere building. There's no talk about just what it feels like to be in space, what it feels like to be on the space station, what it feels like to be in the Amazon rainforest, what's going on, and uh, just it, describe these places because they're cool. I would like to know. And it's just really begging to to be have the movie rights be bought because it's like, oh, we don't have to deal with that because when they buy the movie rights... They're going to do that all, all of that for us. <laughs> okay. But, like, I would like more, please. As someone who is reading this book before movie rights are even talked about. You know? Uh, the coolest thing, the one part that got me, though, was the part where she had to spacewalk. And if you don't know what spacewalking is... That is when they go outside of the the International Space Station or in the vastness of space and walking on those, like, those platforms um, because something broke and she had to go fix it and it was only on the outside and she had to go spacewalk. That was really cool. I wish we had more scenes like that. But we didn't. So... That's really what hindered this book. This is a low four star for me. Um, it's more, it's borderline 3.75 ish. Um, but on my call pile, it, it did end up being um, a four star, although a low four star. I enjoyed it for what it was, but there is a lot of room for improvement on it, uh, and definitely begging to be uh, made into a movie rather than being just a book. So, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Again, thank you to the publisher for sending me this book for review, for an honest review. I hope you guys enjoyed. Be a good cabbage, and I'll see you in my next video. I love you guys. Bye.